And now we're off to a bad start. Our last start was perfectly fine. It was perfectly amicable. Now we're at each other's And now we're at each other's throats. All because I can see the screen now. And you've ruined this Christmas. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Stories. This is Troy, and it is Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. A happy Christmas. Uh, a cheerful new year. A cheerful new year. A, a somber uh, Rosh Hashanah. A, uh, a dignified Kwanzaa. A what a Hanukkah is this time of year. Yeah. What am I thinking? You said the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. I think that's like in September. Yes, it's a fall holiday. That's one of the big ones, though. It is. I think it's about repentance or forgiveness. Do you have to give something up the way that a Christian does in, during Lent, or a Catholic, rather? Lent's a Catholic hey. thing, right? Well, that's up for debate. I practice <laughs> Lent. Do you? And I'm not Catholic. What do you give up? What did you give up this year? Uh, well, it hasn't happened. Well, I guess technically this year. It's coming up. Yes. Is it? Uh, yeah. Lent? Lent is 40 days before Easter, so it starts in like February-ish. Oh, that's uh, that's a good time. Yeah. Beginning of the year is a good time to just sort of give up eating yeah. turtles. So it starts The chocolate on, kind, not uh, the real ones. I thought you meant the real ones there. <laughs> and I was just going to breeze right past it. Yeah, you were. And I was going to be like, yeah, should really stop eating turtles. You wanted nothing to do with that. It starts on Ash Wednesday. So yeah. weird, by the way. What's weird? So weird not to have the headphones on. Yeah, why'd you take the headphones off? I don't know. Should I put them back on? <laughs> <laughs> Is it easier for you to turn around here? We're all backwards here today, folks. Yeah, uh, usually. Troy put his desk into like a normal spot for like yeah. people who live in a house. <laughs> yeah. Instead of in wall. like a studio position. <laughs> yeah. And so now he can't use his desk like a studio. Everything that is important technologically to the podcast is happening out of my vision. Like, it could just stop recording and I wouldn't... I mean, I can see the screen, know. though, because now that everything's backwards... Yeah, now he's Lyndon's not wearing in charge. His, now he's not wearing his headset. <laughs> I'm going to put these back on. Just, just so that, like, half the podcast isn't one of us talking way too loud and the other too quiet or something. That's true. Yeah, I remember one time I wore the headphones when we recorded. Yeah. It was a whole other world. Yeah, those, I mean, you still could. Nah. You, they don't work very well. I think only one of the ears work, and they used to be good, though. They used to be uh, quite nice. It makes me feel like I'm inside a production. Yeah. Instead of just a conversation. If we were, it, and you don't like that. I don't remember how I feel about that. <laughs> I would have to try it again. Before I really knew how I felt. Yeah, this what is I'm trying all, to say is I, I kind of like this this way. This is all, it's, it's a little more um, relaxed almost. Yeah. For me, anyway. I mean, you're sort of, not much has changed on your end. But for me, I get to put my feet up on a chair now. The, the picture. The picture. Let's not forget that. That got cut in our first intro. Yeah, that's right. There was a, there's a picture that I inherited from my grandfather behind your head now. Leaning on the couch, it's not properly hung up, but I kind of like the kind of precarious. But it like yeah. then it frames me like yeah, like I'm in Kananaskis. If only we were filming this, this would be uh, quite the nice. Hey, that reminds we remember last year we did film our Christmas. We special. did. Should we start again and film? No. <laughs> okay. No, we should not. <laughs> You're like it was like us side by side with that fire in the background. I kind of liked that. It was great, great uh, Instagram material. Yeah, and then I got tired of doing that, so we stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. Too long. You know what's funny though? With uh, my new, the reason why I was so tired of doing it is because my laptop was such a. It was like a ten-year-old machine, right? And everything took. About, like, it literally took, like, four hours to upload something to my computer. And uh, let me just, anyway, I got a new computer, so everything's... Now it's lightning fast. Everything's lightning fast, and it's it's a beautiful thing. Lennon, it's our Christmas episode, and uh, this is this is Christmas. So this is Christmas. And uh, did anyone... Um, you know, break your heart, and then the, you had to next year gave it a, something tears. What's that song? 
this year save me from tears i give it to someone special you gave it to your wife (laughs) well last christmas i was with jasmine okay so no one so she did not break my heart we just grew our hearts together infinitely in love last christmas you gave her your heart um and this year she still has it and this year she still has it yeah and the love has only grown stronger so the song does not apply okay never mind then which song would be what about uh baby it's cold outside oh yeah didn't we talk about that last that song year? is canceled that's they right don't play it, it on the radio anymore you know i was watching <laughs> i watched that video i was watching all the clips from last year actually i just sort of went down a a rabbit hole and and uh, I was watching that one. I was like, "Man, this is this is racy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> this can't exist." Is that? Did we have Josh on for that one? We did. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have the three of us, <laughs> and then we just we just uh, keep going down the wrong path. <laughs> yeah. I just think like there's no balance. I just think that the R word is like Beetlejuice. You can't say it more than three times. You know, it's just a. It's not a pleasant sounding word. It's not a pleasant word. And uh, I think it's just, it draws it draws attention in a bad way. Yeah. So let's not say it. Let's give it a lot of power and not say it. Like Voldemort. Oops. Oh, no. Shouldn't have said that. You know and what's then, lacking a Christmas special? What? Harry Potter. Yeah. Where's the Harry Potter Christmas special? Well, there every episode, <laughs> episode every, <laughs> every movie, there's a, there's a Christmas moment in it. You're right. Every little time. And isn't it the most magical, I mean, forgive my pun, but isn't it honestly the most magical Christmas you could ask for? It's up there for sure. Like the fire and you got the... The butter beer. The butter beer and everybody's casting (laughs) satanic (laughs) spells on each other. Little love spells. (laughs) Magical gifts. Yeah, frogs that spit fire out their eyeballs. That's Christmas. And you eat them. (laughs) Now that's Christmas. I don't know about you. That's Christmas to me. That's what kids are going to be saying in like 30 years from now as they've been raised on Harry Potter and all these weird postmodern TV shows. You know, they don't get sort of the the classic Norman Rockwell sort of themed stuff that we got as kids. Mm -hmm. They get... They get... Those things warped into like, you know, whatever millennials and Gen X wanted it to be today. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of uh, millennial humor, yes, we have to address your sketch. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes, Lyndon. Yes. Speaking you, of, you recently uh, produced, directed, yeah. wrote, starred in a Tommy Wiseau original sketch. Something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's my own version of uh what's that the bu- the room the book not the book the, the room. room yeah well i wouldn't compare it to the room much shorter uh much more intentional with its humor yeah um i'll just say this it was supposed to be funny yeah and uh hold on you're like moving your leg in the hold on <laughs> That's better for us. I could just hear like a... <laughs> anyway. So it was intended to be funny. It's on my Facebook page or YouTube or Instagram, wherever you, you can go watch it. But it's kind of dark. Well, here's... I'll tell you... Tell me what I'll you tell heard. you who did not find it funny. <laughs> Every boomer I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was... Oh, and they're... <laughs> they're Jeez. There goes the picture. Oh, jeez. Apologize to my grandfather, please. Grandpa Coops. Okay, we're in a precarious situation. Okay, do you want help? Oh! You know what? Probably if you... Just leave it. And there it is. I think it's fine. It's resting. It's, 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 it's resting. That's where, where it will be for the be. next two years. Um, Yeah, so every boomer you know hated it. Yeah. Should we say, and I don't know who listens to this podcast, does all of your family on both sides... Extended and otherwise, listen to this. Not all of them. Okay. 
someone <laughs> put a negative comment on the sketch. And you know what? People are entitled to put whatever they want, wherever they want. That's true. I, so this is what was said. It was, and I have this quote burned into my brain because I take criticism very poorly and I mm. never forget it. But the the comment was, this is very stupid. I have many words, but we'll refrain for now. And it was uh, a boomer. Yeah, Is it like really inappropriate for us to call <laughs> baby boomers boomers? I don't think so. Okay. I just don't want to get canceled in like five years from now when that's like the new racial slur but it's not racial it's well, you age. know cross that bridge when you get there okay we'll cross anyway boomer tells me <laughs> so uh, yeah. my he, analysis was i was like okay yeah it was a little dark yeah so like i could see maybe being like oh that's not that funny but then like the negative feelings about it and then i was like that's just like millennial humor where there's like this yeah. whole internet culture of like suicide jokes i just saw i saw a tweet the other day that they said uh forgot that the real world isn't twitter someone said are you ready for this year to be over and they said oh i'm ready for this life to be over <laughs> and their co-worker is just like are you okay man is that are you okay and they're just like oh yeah those are you can't say those things unless it's on the internet when you said, because you sent me a message where you're like, people are honestly concerned for your mental well-being. And another friend of mine had like messaged me and she was like, are you, are you okay? And I'm just like, do people not know that this is how I am? I guess not. Like it's, it's a bit of a. Well, yeah. Also, I was just like, this is, know. it's one of those things where I'm like, this was a creative project. Yeah. But I mean. It's like the the wedding sketch where people yeah. are just like, that SOB. <laughs> and I was like, it's fictional. I mean, we are, we're, real. we're real people. Yeah. But we created a, a fictional sketch. Well, I say, I always say we, this one I had to really distance myself from. Yeah. I was like, listen, written, directed, produced by Troy Remington Cooper. Yeah. So if you have issue, take it up with him. I'm well, just I the guy bad. that shows up wearing the same color shirt as him to ruin his sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the guy ruining the wardrobe. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, I, I figured that I should take all the credit for it just because it is so, um, so, I don't know, kind of risky. It's a little dark. It's, you know, it's, it's out there a little bit. People, you know, it's funny though. I, I realized how warped my sense of humor actually is when I'm just like, this is hilarious. I'm just like editing it. And I'm like, wow, this is so funny. And then I show it to people and certainly a lot of positive feedback, but a lot of a, a decent chunk of like, this is, we're worried for you. Well, Are you okay? Because I, uh, I wasn't there for all the filming. Or all the editing. Yeah. So it's like you added stuff in that I wouldn't... <laughs> where there's like all these extra cuts of you being extra crazy. Yeah. Theo was... Or the, should we say... Was it Kip or Steve? Steve, yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve has... Steve. S- Steve has mental health problems. <laughs> that we can confirm. Steve is portrayed by Troy Cooper. Uh-huh. Written by Troy Cooper. Yeah. I play Steve. I play the crazy one. Uh, which is... Only fair, I think. Who else could I have asked to do that? I think Theo would have done a pretty good job. Theo did a, an amazing job as as a character with one line originally. Uh, actually, everyone did a really good job in that. I was so happy with how it turned out besides the, you know, <laughs> the negativity. I always leave these sketches being like, oh my gosh, I forgot about acting. I I do too. Like you bring, you brought your one drama friend and I was like, Oh man, she's like on right now. Like she's acting. Yeah. And I'm always like, I always forget like afterwards. I'm like, I should have acted. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of like, I just kind of show up and say the lines and I don't really like act. That's kind of, and I was like, I should try harder at this. (laughs) That's the magic of your performances though. That's what I really like about them is that, at the very the very first go through of any lines, 
you're literally just it's like you're more animated just in a regular conversation than you are like <laughs> once the camera turns on for some reason yeah but and I'm just like looking at your little friend. I'm like, there's a theater actor if I ever saw one. Yeah. I was like, I'm a screen actor. She I'm was about good. subtlety. <laughs> <laughs> they were she was good. She uh and what's her name? Abby, she she's I don't know if she's acted before. I I forget, but she was good too. And then Theo was uh he was he went above and beyond he his went role above and beyond what was i think you're you were good for that role i always my father always has said this too that you're like a great you're like a great straight man in in comedy and these things just like a mm. the strong solid like proxy for the audience right you know yeah you know what sketch mm. i was reading yesterday it was the uh essential oils <laughs> one <laughs> And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, that one, that's too ambitious. It has so many practical effects. A lot of practical effects. It's very long. I think it's pretty funny, though. It's like, uh, we like just riffed for and uh, like an hour and recorded it. And I like took all those jokes and turned it into a 15 page script, which would equate to about 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, I think it was like it was like a short sitcom episode, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, whoever's listening to this has no idea really what we're talking no, about. No, it's like a radio play. I, I feel like we should like read it as like a radio play on one of the podcasts sometime. Well, that's how we like originally wrote it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's we... it's meant to be over a the premise is that um it's during a podcast we have a guest who's telling this horrific story of like conquering a tribulation or a car accident or something it's an actual mission story it's an actual mission story from this person's point of view and then we're just like listening and then Lyndon jumps in and is like hey here just real quick uh essential oils if you have you know dry skin or if you <laughs> what's yeah. a what's a dumb what's like a serious medical problem that uh you know these oil, like if you have uh aids <laughs> then not if you AIDS. have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, <laughs> ylang ylang. Put some ylang ylang in your eyes. I think one of the one of the best lines from the whole thing, because like in one point you you put the oil in your eyes, yeah, and you're like, <laughs> you say, you know what, you know what God intended to go in your eyes. And I'm like nothing. Ylang ylang oil. <laughs> you shoot oil in your eyes. We should do that. That was, that was a good one. We need to do something. Well, yeah, we got. You got to do something to combat the the negativity yeah. from this last one. We need a, a, a lighter one, although that one's dark too. Yeah, and I get a. I it, think I would get a writing credit on that one, so now I'm afraid for sure. But the thing is that, um, yeah, I wrote some of those jokes. Yeah, we can't ever make that. A lot of them. <laughs> but that's why we should do it. I think it's uh it's a. It's a good one. You know what? You know what I'm finding actually. This is the lesson I'm learning from this. If you talk about dark things, it's fine. Mm. If you allude to them through talking about it, it's fine. If you show yourself putting a gun to your head and pulling the trigger, people get upset. Yeah, it's true. I never actually saw that in film. We just filmed my reactions to it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's that gets like an R rating. Does it? I don't know. <laughs> we all know the Motion Picture Association of know America is by heart. arbitrary. That's true. Um, yeah, it's so funny because as we were shooting it, I was just trying to like get through it quickly because we'd already been there for hours at that point, and Theo was nice enough to stick around and ha- uh, shoot my parts of it. I literally thought I would just be shooting it by myself. Like I thought everyone was just sort of going to go home and. Because we were there, it was like three hours, I think, at that point. But, um, so I wasn't really thinking about how dark it was. I was just thinking, like, let's just get through this. Because I want to, you know, so Theo can go home. See his two little babies. Of course, it was... They, they were, were fast asleep. Fast asleep at that point. So, um, all this is to say, I'm fine. I wrote that script years ago. That was in university. A lot of these... A lot of these sketches I want to do now, 
part of me wonders if people are going to be like, what is he doing? Like, why is he? But I set a goal for myself to just like be more creative this year. That's true. That is some people were like, are you guys getting ready for another mission stories? They're like, why are the, why? <laughs> What's like, the why point? does this sketch even exist? Why is it on my feed? <laughs> and it's just like, hey, listen, creating things. I think, uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, I like to uh, do you it. You know, and, and I'm always like, listen, because that was my point where I always forget to act. And then I see what you do in the edits. And I was like, Troy turns me into an actor. You uh, Fixes it in post. You are, you're not a bad actor. You're a good actor. You, this is, a, this is a, especially with like the kind of filming that I like to do. I like to just tell people what to do. I don't like people to have a lot of agency with their acting. It's true. You are a strict director. I like to just be like, do it like this. Oh yeah. In the last, was it the last mission story sketch when you had your co-director? Uh, <laughs> I yeah. saw you unraveling a little bit. Yeah, and I had to like kind of fight for control sort of thing. That's right. Yes, that's right. We can all say it. Friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. Dave, Best in the business. Best in the biz. Dave Hyatt was... Giving uh, directions to your actors, and I saw you just losing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Not it, because his directions were bad, but because he was giving directions. That's not the... Maybe it is. I'm a control freak, but I wasn't losing my mind, was I? It no, was just that there was gently unraveling. There was a moment. It was the thing I remember was with Josh. Oh yeah. When he was, I was like feeding him these horrific lines to say, "I'm human garbage," uh, <laughs> which <laughs> is like, like that. What's the, I forget what the line was that everyone was. I yeah. think you probably made. He's just like I should kill myself, <laughs> and everyone was I like, "Say that!" And everyone was like, "Troy, don't make him say that. You shouldn't. He shouldn't say that, or and you shouldn't even use that." <laughs> and you're like, "It's what I want. Say it." Just kidding. Well, I don't. Um, this is probably a, a fake story. It was. It may have been. It was dark enough that people were like, "Whoa," but it was something, something very self-deprecating that. I knew Josh would be fine with saying it. And that's like, I wouldn't give that to anybody. You know? But they're just like, quit making him say these things. He might start to internalize it. <laughs> and you're just like, don't you guys understand about acting, the creative process? None of it's real. It's not real. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, I'm fine. So I'm out here trying. I'm, I'm just warped. Like, Listen, look at I'm the, warped. Look at the beautiful editing of the sketch. And it's just like, just imagine what could happen if you tweak the content a little bit. <laughs> I think we need to, at least. But also at the same time, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta tweak. You gotta, you gotta shift with, with. Um, I've had a lot of positive feedback though, because you're right. It is like a very millennial humor sort of thing. It is. Uh, it's dark, and I think that. I mean, it's literally dark. That was part of the editing. Yeah. Some of yeah, the the lighting is is purposefully dark in some moments of you it. Know, some would say it reflects the state of the character Steve's soul. Yeah. That's... And the fears of those around trying to play some quizzle. Yeah. Trying to play that quiz. Quiz quiz. Yeah. I don't know. It's it was an interesting experience. Lessons were learned for sure. Uh it makes me nervous. You know, I wonder how dark it... Because I have, like, other scripts as well that are... Um, maybe it's just the suicide aspect of it. You know, it's, it's like, the more you talk about it and the more you think about it, like, the darker it gets. Like, I feel like just watching it is, like... Just, like, its face value is where I... How I meant for it to be watched. Like, I didn't mean for anybody to read anything else into it no that's like the the well i feel because like, there's supposed to be like a disconnect when you watch uh you know robert downey jr play iron man yeah because we don't know him that's right yeah that's most right. of our interactions <laughs> with robert downey jr are on a screen as iron man most of our interactions with you are in real life in real life and now you're watching me in real life put a gun to my head with a super realistic sound effect of a 
of a dry fire, you know, pulling the trigger. So, so, so happy of course with it's that unsettled. sound effect, by the way. Yeah, it is unsettling. So I, I apologize uh, for any unintended negative feelings that anyone had from watching it. Because I really didn't. And I actually do feel bad when, when like, all of my intentions were good and just to make people uh, have a laugh. And so when I, and then I was worried for you and for Theo, too. You're like, I was worried for everyone once like, the Their neg- poor reputation. I know, yeah. It's like, oh, these poor people, they were so kind to, you know, put themselves in this thing. All, to be fair, I sent everyone the script and everybody knew. Except for, I don't know if you had read it before. I had, <laughs> to, I had read it once before. Okay. So anyway, people, <laughs> on the one hand, I'm sorry. On the other hand, everybody calm down. Just relax. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry and relax. I'm sorry, but also relax. There goes my mic. Um, Let's see. What else is there? You, that we just spent on. Uh, well, some feedback I got that was interesting is one of our true and faithful were just like loved the 45 minutes you spent talking about Star Wars. They're like they're, sarcastic? No. Sincere. They, they actually loved it. They're like, I'm a secret Star Wars fan. Didn't know you were so into Star Wars. I got the opposite from another true and faithful who's like not into it. So I don't know, I guess different things for different people. Yeah. Different strokes for different folks. So, I mean, not everyone hated it. No. Uh, much about, you know, anything in life. Not everyone hated it. Do we need to talk? I ha- Listen, I haven't seen the... Um, the latest um, episode. The latest of, episode. Of yeah. The Mandalorian. Of the Mandy. The Mando. Beats in time. Mr. Mando. There we go. You got to get to it. I got, uh, I got back from school, finished up my semester. Yeah, you're done school now. And uh, Jasmine was in her, her little study room doing her work. And I was about to get down to something. And I just marched in there. And I was like, wrap up what you're doing. It's Friday. It's Friday, baby. We got to go see Baby Yoda. <laughs> and she was like, I really need to study. And I said, wrap up what you're doing. We got to go see. It's time for the Mandalorian. Baby Yoda. <laughs> Would she be upset if you watched it by yourself? Uh, upset... Or just betrayed and hurt. <laughs> <laughs> just, just betrayed and hurt. Yeah. Um. Okay. So she likes it. Yeah. She's so you it. have seen the episode that because we have to go back and fix that now is when we're like, does this place take place on Tatooine? Right. It's obvious now that they've gone to Tatooine and they yeah. made all of the very yeah. obvious uh, allusions to it. I really enjoyed that. That was like. Did you like that episode or just the the fan service? Um, you know, I'm starting to realize something about this show, which is, it's it feels very. It's serialized, in that it like it does have an overarching plot, but it's starting to feel a bit like a week to week, self contained episode kind of a show. I think that's what they're going for. Which I like, but also I like, like I thought this would be in the in the vein of like a Breaking Bad, which is every episode is leading into the next very methodically. Whereas I feel like this show is a little more, what would be a, a good analog to it? Yeah, like each little cellular episode. Yeah, like you could watch one episode and... And they tell you everything you need to know in the episode that you need to know to enjoy it. Yeah. You, they're, they're all almost standalone episodes. To yeah. Because um, I know and that kind of like ruins, well, old Jasmine, her little analysis. She's like, watch the Tatooine episode. She's like, that one wasn't even that good. And I was just like, uh-huh. well, there was a lot of things as someone who's not a hardcore Star Wars fan that you're not like geeking out over. You're like, it's the cantina. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot of the same shots, even from yeah. a new hope, like Moss Eisley. Yeah. That sort of wide shot of the whole. And place. Amy Sedaris, her, she's like, drag these bodies out to beggars. Canyon." Everyone's like beggars. Canyon, <laughs> where Luke Skywalker used to he shoot a womp rat. And used to was... murder womp rats. <laughs> that was his training for, uh, blowing up the death star and making all these connections. But it's like, Standing, and then she like could predict everything. 
where it's just like, you know, he's going to because it's Ray, yeah. being a, like a, the serialized episode. There's like at the end of the episode, everything kind of has to come back into that status quo. Yes. Where, well, that's that's when I realized that's the that's what this show is. When he spoiler alert died, that guy at the end of the episode, the bounty hunter, the bounty hunter. I was like, oh, this if this were like a real serialized show, he would live. And he would now become a big part of the show because his role, that's like a pretty, there, there's like a three way sort of cross betrayal happening here that could yeah. go like seasons long in a, in a uh, Breaking Bad, you know, Mad Men style show an AMC and AMC, which is what I was hoping for because yeah. Jasmine's just like, oh, the Mandalorian is just going to kill that guy. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> um because that would be not very interesting if that happened. <laughs> <clears throat> and I have higher hopes. Yeah. Because I'm like, there should be like an episode where he makes off with Baby Yoda. And the next episode is him chasing him across the galaxy or something. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be great. But. Um, how many episodes is this? This I, is chapter six. But how many do we know how many episodes there are going to be? I don't know if that's been confirmed. I will say that I like sort of the way that the Mandalorian is settling into my life as a schedule, Mm -hmm. you know, every week, every Friday, I got some new Star Wars to look forward to. See, I like that. I like that. The wife was just like, oh, can we just, she's like, I'm so sick of watching like 30 minutes at a time. She's like, I want to watch them all Uh, at once. I kind of agree with her a little bit, but uh, I do, I'm... I'm the kind of person to eat it all, all the, the ice cream at once, sort of a person. And you so, get a little tummy ache. Yeah. And then I get, a, and then my gut just bloats out and I hate my, you know, have you ever felt how heavy a Ben and Jerry's tub of ice cream is? It's got some mass to it. It's heavy. It's dense. And then I eat the whole thing <laughs> and then it's in my stomach. And I'm like, no wonder I have a stomach ache. I have like three. Literally, I've gained three pounds just from eating probably five. No, not five pounds. That's impossible. It's not impossible. It's 500 milliliters <laughs> of ice cream. It does not weigh five pounds. Have you felt one of those? I have. It's five pounds. You've gained five pounds from Ben and Jerry's. And the water gain. <laughs> and the water weight. Yeah. Yeah. That comes in. Anyway, it's just so <laughs> heavy <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. And it's the perfect analogy for to, binge watching that's TV right. series. That's where I was going with that. I so yeah, um, you might like. It's it. good for me that it's week to week. Otherwise, yeah. I would just um, eat the whole tub of ice cream at once. Yeah, because I've noticed after the first few episodes, there's like, it's like recap, and you're realizing that the recap isn't very important. <laughs> Two seconds long. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, like, as a Mandalorian, baby Yodi, what do you need? It's like he took the he took baby Yoda and now this is their life forever. Yeah, right. Like that's it, right? Like, so it's like the first three establishing episodes, now it's like and now this is their life forever. Um the episode where they go to the planet and help the village. Yeah. That could have that the thing the other thing is that that could have been an ending to the show. Mhm. Theoretically, if if they well, had, like, the Mandalorian tried to have it end that way. If they just didn't write in that someone put a baby Yoda in the crosshairs and the internet freaked out. Do you remember this? That in that one, that end of that episode, a bounty hunter is like about to kill baby Yoda. It's in the crosshairs. Mm-hmm. So there's that image on the internet of that and everyone freaks out. They're like the moment Disney plus loses all of its, well, I, know, I was concerned, and then I was like, wait, this isn't Game of Thrones. Yeah, I was like, they're not going to kill... A, it's Disney. B, it's not Game of Thrones. Yeah, they're just like, we're going to kill off Baby Yoda so that it can finally be a show about the Mandalorian. <laughs> and it's like, now the Mandalorian is free of this burden, and he can continue on his life. <laughs> but I was just like, no, this isn't Game of Thrones. They can't kill off the most beloved creature on Earth right now, of- I think. All cinema history at this point. It is. I do. I, I did see it's the most popular show in the world right now. Yeah. And yeah, it's a good show. 
it's good. It's a really good show. It falls short of the sort of I think it's I think history may not be as kind to it, you know? With time, I think we're going to look back and be like this show could have been a great show. Instead, it's simply good because like technically it's just a it's just great. Story wise, I think it's good. Well, I mean, they're nailing it in that they're like, we're going to make a, a good serialized show with Baby Yoda, which everyone adores. So they've killed it in that regard. Yeah, they just. But you're right. Then it's like once the the fanfare wears off, they're going to be like, yeah, the Mandalorian was OK. Now, here's where we have to get into predictions. OK. Are we going to start to realize the Mandalorian was just a good show once Kenobi comes out? Is oh, that's going to be a show. You didn't hear? Have you not heard any of this? I remember. I'm remembering it now. Like, uh, what's his name? Ewan. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Yeah. He was like, I don't know why. I guess he was in a movie, and he was going on like a little the little interview circuit. Yeah. And everyone kept asking him, like, Would you like to be in a you know, standalone Kenobi film. And he's like, Oh, I would love to reprise that role when secretly he'd already. Yeah. Been booked. It was in the works. It was already like, there was all the rumors about the Kenobi standalone film. And he had the haircut and the beard back. I remember it. Yeah. And they, he was like already filming the, the series at that point. Or oh, they, is it filmed? Is it ready? Yeah. Is it locked and loaded? Ready to go? Yeah. Like I'm actually like, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be come out on release of Disney Plus. Yeah. Because they've like filmed already. You know, Disney Plus is a very interesting platform. So like the way that they're doing it is interesting. I think they're only going to do. This is my prediction that they will only have one triple A hot ticket item going at one time. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Well, they're already filming season two of the yeah. Mandalorian. But yeah, they're just like, let the Mandalorian have the spotlight. Yes. And even though like Kenobi is ready to go, they're going to wait. They'll wait till. And they probably won't do season two of the Mandalorian until the first Next. season of Kenobi yeah. is done. And I wonder how they're going to do with um, Marvel stuff, too, because I know they have a bunch of Marvel shows coming out. Ah, who cares about those? You don't care? I don't care. Loki? You don't no. care about Loki? Is that a TV series they're doing? Burdened with greatness. Yeah. Did they get the Tom Loki Hiddleston? Doing yeah, that? they're all in. It's all connected to the MCU. Wanda and Vision? I could be interested in Wanda that. Wanda Vision, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, what else? I don't know, that's it. Hawkeye, that show, no interest in that. Hawkeye's the worst character. Yeah. Nah, I'm just kidding. But even like, that's something to be said about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that the worst Avenger is pretty good. Yeah. But what do you think uh, Kenobi's going to be like? You're like, let's get yeah. back to Star Wars. No one cares about <laughs> superheroes and Marvel. I do. It's all about Star Wars. Although I haven't wanna... brought myself to watch any Marvel thing on Disney Plus yet. So what does that tell you? Um, We're going to get a Breaking Bad style Kenobi film. I doubt it. Is it just going to be like the standalone episodes again? I hope they tell a story with Kenobi. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I hope it's like a beginning end story of a period of time, probably from, you know, in between post Clone Wars. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think there's, there'll be time jumps? So it's like you get the moment episode three ends. Maybe that's an episode of him getting settled into life on Tatooine. Yeah, well. Time jump to. Cause there is it's not the, that long, though, is well, it? Well, there's like the animated series Rebels. And right. A, and an old Kenobi is in that for like a few episodes. Right. And Maul is in that series, too. Yeah. And it shows the final confrontation between Kenobi and Maul. <laughs> so we've already filled in all this canon already. And that's canon, yeah. right? Yeah, that's canon. So it's like, are they going to redo that for the live action one? It's almost... 
I mean, no. They they sh- could. I mean, they could. They should, and they should almost redo it so that it's longer than one second, and Kenobi just like kills him again. I don't know. Um, so it's like, well, yeah. What? What are they gonna do? I sand people. Yeah, and does he go to different? Is it possible to have a something as sweeping and epic as a Star Wars film in TV show format? I think the way you'd have to do it in a way in more of a serialized storytelling format than just the standalone style episodes, because the standalone is is taking away for me. It's taking away from the epicness of, say, a Star Wars film. Right. And maybe that's intentional. I think it is for Mandalorian. I think uh, I think they wanted it to be bite-sized and easily digestible. Yeah. As for Kenobi, I don't know, because they have a winning formula right now with, with the Mandalorian, so I don't know if they're going to try to mess with it or not. They might yeah. just, you know. I mean, look at the Marvel movies. Why they they with? found something that worked, and they're like, "Let's make twenty yeah. of them." Well, and speaking of time jumps, uh, they can make McGregor look like any age Kenobi. Look at the <sighs> Irishman. That's right, the Irishman. Did you watch that? I I watched it. I watched all three and a half hours. Jasmine watched it with me in one go. We had to do it in two sittings. I think I did it in three. Long movie. Yeah, we watched the first half, and then we watched. We did, yeah. No, we did an hour and a half, and then we did the last two hours. And I watched the uh, the little after, the 20 minutes yeah. where they all sit down. You know what blew my mind? How? Is I watched The Irishman, and Jimmy Hoffa comes on, and I was like, why does that actor look so familiar? I was like, that looks like such a famous actor that I don't recognize at all. <laughs> And then when I watch the little after things, I'm like, why is Al Pacino here? <laughs> and I was like, oh, of course, Al Pacino played oh, Jimmy you, Hoffa. You didn't even realize I did, the whole time I watched, Jimmy Hoffa was Al Pacino? I recognized him as a famous actor. I was like, this is a guy that's been in stuff. But yeah. I didn't recognize it was Al Pacino. Also. Until I saw Al Pacino talking about being in the film. Huge part of the marketing that he was in the movie. You know, Pacino, I'm De Niro. Just, Pesci. Yeah, but I'm just like, Al Pacino's never been in a Scorsese film. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, this is the first time. So I'm just like, that's, that's a whole other. And it's just funny watching The Irishman and so much of it with Jasmine's like, what is happening? I was like, if you had seen Goodfellas or The Godfather, so much of this movie would make so much more sense. Because uh, it's a mob, it's a mafia movie. Yeah, I mean, it it borrows a lot of the same tropes. I mean, uh, Hoffa is basically Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas, almost just a guy. It's basically what it is. And and what's his De Niro is now. It's so funny. They've all just sort of traded roles, except for uh, what's his name, the guy who plays Henry Hill, whose name is Frank Liotta, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta is now De Niro in The Irishman. Yeah. And Pesci is now, he stands, in, he's kind of the, the De Niro in Goodfellas, sort of the like standing for the the estab- mob establishment. And Pesci is the troublemaker who is Al Pacino in The Irishman. Hopefully... <laughs> people follow that i barely did i barely got i was listening and i was like yep yep you're like that's what he's saying it won't make sense because you're like now pesci is the new pacino and pacino's <laughs> the new de niro <laughs> and de niro is still he's not de niro. the same yeah <laughs> and ray liotta's in there and you're like he's Harvey the new Kite. ray liotta but ray liotta's not in this one yeah frank liotta <laughs> frank liotta <laughs> Frank Leota, Baby Yoda and Frank Leota. That's the episode name. Uh, <laughs> what else is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I got depressed watching that that Irishman movie. Watching them all as old guys, trying to be young guys. Very sad. 
Yeah. I don't know. It really made me, it gave me existential dread big time. <laughs> Just watching uh, De Niro stomp on a guy's hand, but very unconvincingly, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that was the thing in Scorsese directing Hoffa's first scene, and he's like, you're supposed to get up yeah. like you're, you know, 35 years you're, old. You're, you're you need 40 to, You here. need to get out, you need to get off the couch a little faster, but he's, like, too afraid to tell him because he's never worked with him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I know you're, like, 60, but in this scene, you're playing, like, a 40-year-old, so I you need to be a little more spry. <laughs> It's gotta be like seventy or something. Yeah, they're all up there. <laughs> yeah, it was. So that was a little bit sad. Do you think the movie was good? Here's the thing. It, I thought about it for like a day and a half afterwards. Yeah. And yeah, it kind of makes you sad. So it made me feel things. Mm-hmm. So it's cinema. <laughs> Theo said. Uh, something interesting which was you can't really say that Scorsese is glorifying the mob lifestyle because it shows that you know everyone die it shows like it's an interesting thing where they would show a character and they would show like the time and date when they would when they were dead or killed or Mm -hmm. you know died of natural causes in some instances but yeah, a lot of these guys had very short lives, and so I thought that was an interesting take. Well, yeah. I thought like uh, the theme of the movie was like, "There's a price for all your sins." Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the mob. That's the mob. That's the Godfather. That's Goodfella. That's all of them. It's sort of a, a theme. You can't do a mob film where at the end it's like, and they all lived happily ever after. Unless it's like <laughs> mobsters and Mormons or something, which I have not seen. But um, yeah, it's kind of the, the trope of it. You can't, there's always comeuppance at the end of it, whether it's yeah. death or prison or losing you know, a family. Usually murdering not. your friend. Oh, so sad. How sad were you? Do you think De Niro did a good job? Here, that's a loaded question. I think you, you can tell sort of what I think just from how I said it, but you already were like he was very unconvincing as a young man. It's uh, Robert. What am I going to say? Robert De Niro, De Niro's a bad actor. No, that's you can't say that about it. Like he just does. Did he seem super, you know, heartfelt or? Do you really portray the portray the emotion? Mm. He's he's just himself, you know. He's he's Robert De Niro. He's him phoning something in is going to be better than a lot of a lot of other actors at their best. But yeah, I don't. I thought I thought Pacino was a was really good. He goes, he goes, his, he goes a little crazy sometimes in some scenes he goes a little crazy, but he's always interesting to watch. They both are. They all are, but. I thought Joe Pesci did a real good job. Joe Pesci was great. Missed him. I'm sad uh, he hasn't been acting more. Did he, I guess he just like quit acting for like. Well, I mean, he got like typecast. True. As like this weird, like. I think if kids today watched Goodfellas, they're like, that's what a tough guy was in the 90s? Yeah. <laughs> We're like, yeah, this was a tough guy in the 90s. Yeah, the toughest of the guys. And now uh, now that he's old, he can play a different role. And now that they have this yeah. CGI makeup editing stuff, they're in, like, they joke, they're like, we can act for another 20 years. And everyone's like, ha, ha, ha. I did like, I watched that thing and I was... Um, Scorsese was talking about the uh, the digital makeup and how with traditional makeup we sort of accept us we suspend our disbelief enough so that we're like yeah okay they're wearing makeup they're trying to portray something with the makeup and that why don't we we're like we're harsher on digital effects is basically what he was saying but like mm-hmm. maybe we should give it a little more a little more leeway Cause which we- I liked that thought. Yeah, because didn't he say it's like the same people that 
that did the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's all that like Rogue One. Yeah. And Tarkin uh, and Leia. Tarkin and Leia, which I'll admit, like, uh, they did a really good job with Pesci making him look young. Like, I didn't even realize how old he actually was. He's very old. Yeah. And they show the, like, before and after shots of him in a few scenes. And he, uh, it's it's sad how old he is. That's the thing. It's so sad how old everybody is, but. Makes me. That was your takeaway from the film. A big takeaway, yeah. the The film ended, and I was like, "Man, I need to go back to Disney Plus. I need yeah. to watch some cartoons." This is my struggle these days, because now, like, The Witcher is coming out on Netflix soon. Yeah, and I'm just like, I can't go back to that. <laughs> to the darkness. Yeah, it yeah. is. I I love Disney, and I love. Uh, and now I'm seeing everyone's complaint with our sketch and very <laughs> my sketch. It was very bad timing, really. Yeah. <laughs> Just like everyone's every, been like everyone's high on Disney. Gorging themselves on Disney content and then Just you, light and fluffy and I'm like, here's some crazy stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I am uh I'll just be like watching a, a Disney movie and be like, I feel so good right now. I feel good. I feel like Mr. Peanut Butter. <laughs> yeah. Is this a crossover episode? My, uh, I think my diet of, of, you know, content that I consume has been like dark and gritty for so long. I, uh, so when I finally like watched Ratatouille and 101 Dalmatians and all these movies back to back, I was just like, life is so magical and beautiful. It it's felt great. Need. It's what we need. It's what we need, Lyndon. But, I mean, can't just talk about cinema all day long. No, we can't. Do we have any uh, emails? Um, the people. Hold on. Why isn't this work? Oh, it's my wrong hand. Hold on. <laughs> oh, we're up, we're up on an hour, almost. But, yeah, let's, uh, I think we got two emails. We haven't talked about anything, uh... Yeah, I had a, <laughs> anything Mormon. I had one encounter with someone at basketball, and they were like, "Hey, I finally listened to an episode of your podcast." What'd they say? Well, and I said, "Well, uh, from when?" He's like, "Ah, uh, he's like, I don't." He's like, "It was either one of your latest ones or your first one." And I was like, "Did we talk about mission stories in it, or was it kind of random?" He's like, "It was kind of random." I was like, "Okay, it's one of the later episodes." <laughs> <laughs> this is where we've sort of. Uh, I was like, eh. gone off the rails a bit. <laughs> It's called Mission Stories, but we haven't told Mission Stories since the first few episodes. Did you want... And he was very understanding. He's like, yeah, you can only get it so many episodes. Oh, yeah, I mean, come on. So this is, uh, this is an email from Alex Williams. He says, time for my regular email. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. He says, Jawas are seen on Lothal in Star Wars Rebels, so they mm-hmm. go places. So that's what he was saying. This is right. back when we were unsure about if that was uh, Tatooine or not. Yeah, Jawas go everywhere, we've learned. Yes. Um, He says, loved your discussion on film. Why not start a film podcast for me to subscribe to? Hey, from the sounds of it... This is a film podcast. You're already subscribed to it. It's this. We're changing. (laughs) This is now a film. (laughs) Just kidding. It's whatever we want to talk about. Um, Yeah, if you have something you'd like to hear, a topic we, you know, just to go off, for us to go off about, let us know. Send it in. Send it in. He also says, also, I'd, I'd listen to your Hemingway podcast just so I can know what he wrote and seem smart without having to read another word. True and faithful. Do you get the impression maybe he didn't like reading Hemingway? I think he mentioned in an earlier email that he's he's not that great at reading. Okay, just generally. Or he's not that fast. Okay. He's good at reading, yeah. but he's slow. I'm a, that's the same with me, man. Well, if you're a slow reader, who better to read than Hemingway? True. Because his books are short. His sentences are short. No, sometimes they can be long, though, because he uses that and all the time. Like, right. And this and that and, and, and. There's I did, a... Uh, I did make a Christmas break reading list. Oh. My goal is to read a lot, like 100 pages a day. <laughs> and I, wow. I picked um, A Farewell to Arms. Okay. That's the one Hemingway book I yeah. plan on reading. 
Yeah, there's a lot of books. I, I guess looked at the short stories. But I'm like, we got to save the short stories for the podcast. Are we doing that? Should we do that? Well, it was an idea I had that you said sounds neat, and we've had one person just email in and say they'd listen to it. That's as <laughs> that's as much permission as we'll ever need or get to do such a thing. But we'd have to do it on this podcast, and that upsets people. <laughs> when there's like mission stories and then there's like you do we have that one f- mormon film oh yeah episode yeah, yeah. and people are like what is this this is a whole other podcast it's like you think we're gonna pay to have separate podcasts <laughs> mother effer you think i'm paying twice for this everything's getting published on this yeah sure why not plus it's like we can't we can't talk for long enough like that's that couldn't go on forever you know, it's like we'd eventually we'd get tired or bored of it or we'd run out of books or something. There's only so many short stories. There's only so many. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot, but there, it's not an infinite amount. Yes. Do you, um, here's another email. This is from Andrew Cacao. It's called The Elder Bednar Theory. He says, with all your talks of general conference and best speakers of all time, I think you've overlooked an emerging, an emerging conspiracy theory. Ooh, conspiracy Here we go. theory. I try to be a grounded person, but I am not convinced that David Allen Bednar is not a fully automated android constructed by university professors while he was a quote-unquote professor at Purdue. The evidence. His side part. (laughs) How do we know that this isn't the hinge that opens up the panel to his mainframe? No side part formed by mortal men is that perfect that consistently. His jokes. Notice how uncomfortably the audience laughs when he attempts to make the jokes. To make jokes. That's because they're watching him cross the uncanny valley and appear more human. His talks all follow the same format, almost as if they were programmed to be that way. Brothers and sisters, I invite the Holy Ghost to be with us as I review critical points of fasting and prayer. Quote, unquote. Once you add it all up, it becomes irrefutable. The man is no man at all, but rather a machine. Bum, bum, bum. What do you think? God's machine, maybe. He's a God machine. Uh, Deus Ex Machina. His, uh, his little side part. Here's the thing. He gets his hair cut once a week. Are you serious? People have like asked him about that. Where they're like, what's the deal with I your... I get it cut once a week. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. Does that sound like him? Uh, it's to me, it's, it's perfect. It's close, brothers and sisters. No, it's too like it's too like Buffalo Bill. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Buffalo Bill. <laughs> it's too um, much of that in there. Brothers and brothers I, and sisters. I suppose you I've could uh, make the case, Elder Bednar's a little robotic. He's he's uh, robot like. I wouldn't say he's an actual robot. I think he's a man of flesh and blood. I don't right. think we've gotten to that place where we're able to construct a android like that could humans. pass the Turing test. Yeah, and uh, Elder Bednar certainly would pass the Turing test. Well, apparently not because he didn't pass uh, Andrew's Turing test. Mm. And that's a new that's a new way to test Andrew's Turing test. This is a, quite a scandalous way to talk about a man who's very likely to be a future prophet. Yes. I I would watch... You're on thin ice, Andrew. Thin ice. You're talking very uh, negatively about the man who controls your fate, whether you get into heaven or not, because that's how it works. Did uh, you ever hear that? That, like, <laughs> that the apostles were going to help with judgment? Have you heard of this? I, I heard the original twelve apostles uh, would be like something, something. They each get like assigned to a tribe of Israel, and they get yeah. to help with the judgments. <laughs> that you, does sound like something I would have heard before. Yeah, I don't know how I but, feel about it. In fact, Bednar, I don't like it. Well, let's hope for Andrew's sake. I hope I get Jesus to judge me. I hope so, Or too. God. Is it God who judges? God judges. God is the final judge, but Jesus is God. The mediator. One and three, three he and advo- one. He advocates. The Trinity. <laughs> Trinity. Immaterial and without passions. Yes. Wait a second. Huh? That's, that's not what we believe. That's wrong. That's wrong. On every level. 
Why do you think there are so many churches out there? You ever think about that? That's what I used to say to people. That was like my opening line. Mm. You ever wonder why there's so many churches? I said, yeah, why is there? Why not just one universal church? Like, if wow. there's one church, one way to get into heaven. I don't know. Lyndon, um, what are we at now? We're at we're exactly at a two, uh, one hour. We did it. We did it. Um, did you? I kind of. I'm curious what this patriarchal blessing is thing is. Do we save it for another time or? Well, maybe I don't know a teaser, because I haven't even looked into the history or anything. There's one uh, anonymous source. I never got consent to talk about them specifically, where they felt like uh, their patriarchal blessing. Uh, led them astray in their life a little bit hmm. that uh, following that advice, it wasn't personalized to them and that it actually led them away from what would have maybe brought them more joy. And then they've noticed a hmm. trend where patriarchs were, cause that patriarch gave them very specific advice, like occupational advice, be like, do this. Right. But now, like, my patriarchal blessing was very kind of general. Mine's vague. Yeah. So I feel like back in the day, patriarchs kind of got a little <laughs> wild and loose with it. And we're just a little like, too specific. And they're like, okay, here it is. You will be a bricklayer. You're a bricklayer. Like, they thought they Mr. were like the sorting Linden. hat. Well, I guess they technically are. <laughs> they are, too. When it comes to tribes. But like How sorting so? them into like professions. And then I think if, and then I feel like the church was kind of just like, hey, stop doing that. Yeah. Well, that's what we want. That's like we want to be told what to do by God. Right. Every good Mormon wants that. And when it doesn't really happen. Every good Latter-day Saint. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm never going to get it, am I? Every good Mormon wants to follow the way of the world. And every good boy loves fudge or whatever. Eats fudge. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, yeah. Every faithful Latter-day Saint wants to know God's will for their life. Yeah. And it's frust. So it's frustrating when it's, that's hard to know. And when it's vague and when your patriarchal blessing is, you just agonize over it. That's what I used to do. I used to like just tear it apart and be like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I used to, that was my favorite thing to do in, in study personal study uh, on the mish was just pour over my blessing and try to try to decipher the secret messages God had for me. Mm. I, uh, I don't know. It's, I think it's, it's vague enough that it's sort of like whatever I wanted it to be, it could be. And maybe that's what it, you know, there's some specific things in there, but nothing like telling me to be a doctor or anything. Basically, it's like, hey, whatever you do, try hard at it. Maybe God knew that I was just like, a, I'm just one of those people that like don't matter that much. You know, it's just like of all the possibilities, it's like you're either going to work in collecting taxes or you're going to, you know, be an analyst out of some mid-level oil and gas corporate. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same. Forget it. Just try hard. <laughs> that's, where, that's where we ended. <laughs> Me talking about how God doesn't care about my job that much. Which which we've discussed. I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Except. And that's okay. That's okay that he doesn't. People freak out, but I think that's fine that he doesn't care about that. Right. Except now that I heard this story and I was like, man you would have been a lot better served in another profession. But instead you followed after one profession that you didn't have the aptitude for. Can you tell some more details or would that be giving everything away? I think it'd be giving everything away. Okay. But yeah, it's like you didn't have the aptitude for the profession that you thought God wanted you to have. And so then when it doesn't work out, then what are you left with? Where you're just like, Either I failed God, I was inadequate, yeah. or the patriarch was out to lunch. And if the patriarch's out to lunch, then that starts pulling even more threads. 
<laughs> See, this is this is where and this is where I'm just like, and they're just like, maybe talk about that on the podcast. I'm like, we pull too many threads on the podcast. <laughs> Our blanket is is thin enough, and it's we like you to... wanted me to pull on the thread of patriarchal blessings. I'm just like, you know, maybe, maybe not. So this is where it's like, you know, true and faithful. Tell us what you think. Here's a here's another idea. Okay. Um, we recently got one more vote in person. I don't know. We're at like five votes to have Cheryl (laughs) Nagless come on the podcast. Oh yeah. I forgot all about that. (laughs) Um, so I think we're up to five votes. I think we're like a third of the way there. Okay. Um, but then recently, this is an interesting thing where she'll, she makes, she's a big quilter. Yep. She's all about that. And lately she's been making these, these quilts for people. And she always like includes a little message on the back for him. Ooh. And then like we like we've read one and we're just like we're like, Mom, this is like a patriarchal blessing. <laughs> like you just gave this person a patriarchal blessing on the back of this quote. And we call them matriarchal blessings. That's cool. And so I'm just like, that is it's like, yeah. Should my mother be giving people matriarchal blessings on the back of quilts? Hundred percent, yes. And is it is that the way it should be? Should we extend this over to matriarchs, matriarchal blessings? To where it's just like, because it's kind of like, okay, what a really nice thing that there's like, you know, 150 words of a blessing on the back of this quilt, basically. Yeah. But then it, I feel like, you know, when it comes from the stake patriarch, we're just like, these are the words of God. People maybe people put too much stock in it. I th- I know I did. Like I think we need to focus more on. You are the author of your own destiny. I think that's what we need more of. Less of like. Unless um, unless we're not unless you know there is no, you know sort of like uh, there only is what is. Oh by the way, what. Do you know of Watchmen? Do you know Watchmen? Like the it's fictional... A, it's, a, it's a comic, then it was a movie, now it's a TV show. I have heard of it, but I'm not familiar with it. We don't have time to get into it, but... Dr. Manhattan is a character in the Watchmen. He's a godlike character endowed with these powers from a nuclear whatever. Anyway, so he he experiences time all at once. So like whatever is happening in the future, he's experiencing it in, in the past and all the present. It all feels like one thing to him. Mm. It's very unusual. So um, anyway, that just made me think what we were talking about with uh, maybe <laughs> maybe we don't have a ton of maybe it feels like agency, but it's really just sort of, you know, we were always going to do what we were always going to do sort of a thing. Right. This is way too deep. For a second hour of an episode? Well, yeah. We're into the second hour. Well, it's okay. We can keep going. I, I just... Well, uh, this is where I was just like, I wonder if we the were gonna listeners end. vote, I guess, you know, who yeah. they're going to chime in and be like, patriarchal blessings are just Mormon fortune telling. Or <laughs> patriarchal blessings are the distilled will of God for everyone's life. Or what, something in between. What do you think? Because it all comes down... I think it all comes down, and this is sort of an older way of thinking, more of like back in the day where we would say things more along the lines of it's either true or it's completely false. It's either Joseph Smith was a, a, you know, raging lunatic or he was a prophet of God. Because, and I think that's a dangerous dichotomy to make because if you find one chink in the armor, Boom, all of a sudden it's all it's all wrong. Right. Um, of which there are many chinks to be found if you go looking for them. So uh I think it's better to have a more balanced approach to to the whole thing and so that way you sort of you won't find yourself with a testimony in a in a heap on the ground. Um But yeah, I think you're right. I think it is something in between with the those patriarchal blessings. Don't don't put your whole trust completely into them, but I think they're good guideposts a little bit. Take them for what yeah. they're worth, maybe. Like a fortune cookie. 
<laughs> they are just really long fortune cookies. No, but if you see, if you get a fortune cookie, and it's like, wow, this is kind of accurate, or like a horoscope, and you're like, oh, look, that's kind of accurate. You're not gonna like. Of course, I I say this but, I mean, sort of tongue in cheek a little bit, but yeah. and so obviously people put great trust in the patriarchs and and the fact that they're called of God and that like this is specifically like revelation for me, and I think it is, but mm-hmm. also it's getting filtered through a guy who earlier that day might have forgotten to take his Monday pill or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> these are old people. Yeah, they're imperfect. And they try their best. Yeah, that's true. And some of them are a little more headstrong than others. Yeah. I don't put a lot of stock in them. No. Personally. Not a ton. Personally. Um, Not ever, even when you were younger? No. Like, I got mine and I looked at it and I was like, okay, just kind of general advice. It's yeah. Kind of like live the gospel. There were some things where it's like, this happened in the pre-earth life to you. And it's kind of just like, great, you know, like. <laughs> what happened? It's like the. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. You know, I can't say. I but know. it's like, you know, it's kind of, it's like <laughs> the practical, what practical knowledge does that give me? I'm not so sure about. Yeah. About living this life. Yeah. I mean, the only, the only real useful information that I ever used was it said, you'll marry a girl of your choosing. So anytime my mom tried to set me up with any sort of girl, I'd be like, sorry, mom. It's got to be a girl of my choosing, not yours. That's good. I like that. But then she's also like, your patriarchal blessing says you're supposed to follow the counsel of your parents. And I was like, mm. those are those are not mutually exclusive <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, sorry. Sorry. This uh, this one clause trumps your clause. It truly it really does. <laughs> So other than that, I'm just like, you know, this is just... You guys are like lawyers <laughs> fighting about control of your life. Yeah. So I was just like, this was just a really sweet fella from my stake. It was actually in my ward. Trying to give me a little blessing and advice for life. And mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I had a great experience with it. And I... And the... <sighs> is, is a job... Is job the only thing you can really get in trouble for telling someone... Well, I've heard a lot of people that are, you know, like girls, that it's just like, you will serve a full-time mission. (laughs) Right. Like, that's one they get. And then they end up, like, getting married instead of going on a mission, and then, like, their parents are upset. and So it's like jobs, (sighs) mission, education. Some of them are just like, you will get a master's degree in education. Yeah. And then they, like, don't even graduate high school. So, and it's like, because the whole thing is a... And then the other, like, what's the doctrine? Like, we all get put into a tribe. Yeah. Or it's revealed. We're either put into a tribe or it's revealed what tribe we're in. I don't actually know. Yeah. And what is the significance of that? Besides, it's like gathering Israel. (laughs) A lot of of finger quotes around that one. So it's like, so I don't know about that. Gathering. In case you couldn't hear it in his voice. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know about that, but then it's just like, if people are just like, this is the template for my life, it's like, no, you're the template for your life. This is the problem. This is it right here. Really distilled into a a nice little thing with uh, the literalness of of uh, doctrine and with, with these things. Because... If we, you know, follow that to the end of it, of its logical conclusion, if these are literally true, and if it, you didn't do, if the things that are in your blessing didn't happen in real life, then it must conclude that you did something wrong. Well, that is the thing. They're like, this is all according to your faithfulness. Yeah. Either he was wrong or you were wrong. One of the two. Is either God's wrong or you're wrong. And since God can't be wrong, you must have done something bad. You're bad. Uh, or the patriarch was wrong. Or the patriarch was the wrong. The patriarch did not interpret the will of God. What Which about... Which then is like, isn't our church all about personal revelation? So now we got another intermediary. It's a mixture. Right. It's a heavy mixture because... 
because it has to be, and this goes all the way back to the very early days of the church, right when, when Joseph Smith was for skin things going, a lot of people would come forth and be like, you know, because Joseph Smith is like, guys, I had this crazy revelation. God talked to me. Mm-hmm. Another person would be like, hey, me too. Something happened to me too. That was a popular during that whole era. Yeah. And so he'd, he'd have to come down really swift and hard on a lot of people. Be like, no, no, no. I'm the authority. God talks to me. And he would he would shut down a lot of these other people that claimed any sort of Revelation. Then he kind of eased it up and gave, you know, shared the, the power sort yeah. of a little later on. But we got a few like splinter groups from some people with visions. I think. Yeah. Whether you know, there's like 150 of them that still exist out there. Yeah. It's funny because it's like in today's Have you ever church. Looked at Wikipedia about how many splinter groups there are of the Mormon Church. Where we're like Latter Day Saints, FLDS, RLDS, which don't you know they. Have got bought out or whatever but it's like we're like, we're like those are like the two splinter groups yeah there's like dozens there's many more i'm sure each of them are a congregation and that's yeah. about it but yeah. uh which is whatever and they all got their own tlc show i'm sure um yeah i don't know you had a thought um probably just about um the people who I'm trying to find it as I'm talking again. I, can't, I, can't. I really cut you off and was like, have you ever looked at the Wikipedia page? You were right on to a line. And it I was, was like, something about I Troy Cooper. Yeah. You Troy Cooper me. It's okay. That's what these things are for. Um, anyway, I think we were talking about how the, um, the, Oh, Joseph, Joseph Smith, Smith cracking down on cracking visions. down, and in today, I think it was about like in today. Today, you have to, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You have to like, you can have personal revelation as long as it lines up with sort of the hierarchy of like the downward revelation. Yeah, which is gets uh, well, it, it's a unique, dicey. it's a unique position because I remember. The book, The Broken Heart, is that by Hafen? I don't, see, I don't see Hafen, I think. Because he talks about, you know, Catholicism is one extreme where it's like everything is through the church. It's like, you know, your forgiveness, your revelation, every your line to God is through the Catholic Church. Yeah. And then the Protestants are just like, break it all down, bro. Yeah. God is in you. Your only line to God is just you. Yeah. No one else, no organization, just you. So those are like the two extremes. And then the Latter-day Saint church comes in in the yeah. middle. That's just like, hey, it's you, and it's also the church. We walk a line. Yeah. And the line, um, I mean, this it kind of goes back to our discussion about... Um, it's like, it's you through the church. F- finding finding uh, our way via trial and error where the church will try things and we try things and then we sort of uh bounce it off each other and we see where the you know the lines are we both and maybe the the ideal is that you get perfectly in line or close there to you know the church's or god's will and well that's the that's the big question though isn't it is like is everything the church does god's will and is everything you do god's will that's the big question. Certainly not everything. Not everything. And so you have to be open to the idea that not everything the church does is God's will, that mistakes get made. And also, not everything you do is lined up with God. You make mistakes. And so there needs to be a humility on both sides to find uh, the optimal the optimal place. I just had a thought, maybe, is that, is that a different thing for everybody? that sort of positioning of like how you live your life plus how you engage with the church. I think the obvious answer is yes. And in yeah. even the most conservative way, you know, even, mm-hmm. even, even true believing members of the church all do 
church and Sunday a little differently and their study and their gospel. I mean, like just yeah. by virtue of everyone is a little bit different. Yeah, because it's kind of like, at what point do you give up on your patriarchal blessing or something? Sure, yeah. And you're just like, no, that's no, an no, example. Is, I'm writing my own blessing. Yeah. I'm writing my own blessing on the back of a quilt. Yeah, or I'm, yeah, or I find I find some other source of, because I think uh, obviously God can inspire us from many different sources and your mother can certainly be one of them. Mm-hmm. Where's my quilt? Where's my Cheryl blessing? I want one. <laughs> You're going to have to get her on the podcast Cheryl. first. <laughs> that's your that's your entry fee. A blessing blanket for Troy. Lord knows he needs one. Lord knows I need one. What would she say? I have no idea. I would love to know. So far I feel like they've all been for other women. Okay. Hence the matriarchal blessing side of it. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think it'd be a challenge for her to give a blessing quilt to you. I think she would just have some good just advice, though. Mm. Like a patriarchal is sort of a thing. But, like, you know, I don't even think she would need to consult God too long about it. She would just be like, listen, stop with the the video games. <laughs> and stop, stop buying new TVs and... Did you get a new TV? I got a new TV. Oh. It's a nice TV. It's bigger. It's uh it's great. I love s- it. I'm saving up for a bigger, newer TV. I have no regrets about it. I did initially. I always, whenever I buy something, uh didn't regret the computer. Regretted the TV at first. Okay. Didn't look quite as good. But now I've 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 Warmed up to configured it. it, and it's all looking a little better now. You got the black settings just right. I think so. Yeah, video games look amazing on it. The white balance. Yeah, good, good, good. What we're we talking about? Some of the blessings. Blessings, and different quilts, and quilts, and uh, I like that. I think we came to a nice uh, epiphany conclusion about that. That things are. It's a. It's a. It's a calibration, just like the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Much be. like the white balance on a new TV. Yes, yes. You know. The inputs are, are going to re- produce different results. Yeah. Maybe it's not that comforting for people who treat their patriarchal blessing like scripture. You know what? If that's the balance, if that's their balance, then that's good They're, for them. Yeah. I think, I think we can well, have it. Just it just goes back to, you know, pragmatism. It's like, yeah. that's what's working for you. Yeah. Amen. But if it's not, you can you can make allowances that, hey, maybe my, I think my patriarch, uh, you know, forgot his meds that day. And you can say that, and that's fair. And that's like a, that's a good justification, I think, for <laughs> crappy advice, you know? It's like, I think he took his role of patriarch uh, a little out of scope. What about those patriarchs who were like molesting people for like, 30 years and they were like a patriarch the whole time never heard about that i know a guy <laughs> <laughs> i know a guy so i don't know what kind of a story so this is well <laughs> but i got a story it's not so a crazy are you asking story. like does it invalidate all his blessings yeah that's does what it i'm put asking. an asterisk on all of them i think they said it doesn't well yeah but also mm. it kind of does yeah i there's no way you have the spirit molesting kids and doing blessings yeah i mean it does go it's like god works through imperfect people remember moses was a murderer <laughs> <laughs> that he was and the prophet yeah. so so let's not <laughs> let's not all conf- through god all things are possible but also but let's not excuse this man for molesting no no he's you know god will judge him for that let me tell you the story though The story is, I'm at church, I'm early 20s, home from the mission, you know, pretty much an all-star, and then I get, someone's like, hey, um, can you, can you come and help me give a blessing to an old guy, he's, uh, you know, used to be a patriarch, and and I think he was his grandpa, too, actually. Yeah, so he's like, can you help me give a blessing? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, go with him, Uh, it's like before church or something. Go do it. I like anoint. I do the anointing. Oh, he's sick. 
yeah, he's sick. And then the, uh, the grandson does the blessing. I really think nothing of it. I leave. And then I, I go home and I tell my parents about my day and what I did. And I, oh, we went and gave uh, this guy a blessing. My dad's like, you gave who a blessing? Classic Clint. And he's like, that man was a child molester for 30 years. And you blessed him that he'd get healthy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. Here I am. You know, we're just like, bless. He used your ignorant faith <laughs> to heal his <laughs> sinful body. <laughs> anyway, the joke continues, but I'll save it. Um, yeah, I healed of child molester. So that's my, that's my claim did he, to Did fame. he get better? I don't know. I think he's dead now. But yeah, isn't that crazy? But like, it's a, tr- it's an honest, like, well, what do you do with that? Well, that's the thing. You used to be a patriarch because that's like a, a lifelong calling. Like you're a patriarch till you die. Right. That guy obviously wasn't a patriarch anymore. So there was some right, course correction. Yeah. You know, I, I actually don't know what the verdict, I would have to check what it was in terms of like the right. validation of the validity of those blessings. Like, I think maybe there was like, if you want a new one, we understand. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But also <laughs> if you want to re-roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Patriarchal blessings are a funny thing. Um, they almost to me seem dangerous. A little bit. Yeah. It's people making big life decisions based off of, Whatever a guy feels like saying in a particular moment. But, That's really what it is. Because it's what they're, think, they're feeling it, right? I feel like, you know, a very large percentage of them are, are good. Just a good, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of them are good. But, I, but, you know, we have this... It should be 100%. It should be. 99% is still too low. Well, it's... I mean, it's one in a hundred <laughs> Latter-day Saints... Yeah. Are getting like bad guidance or advice. I don't like that. I don't like ninety nine percent success rate on this thing. Well, it's the classic like, how could you get it so wrong? How could you call someone so unqualified in their heart and in their activ their secret activities so un completely unqualified to even be a part of society? And he's the patriarch. You know how do you miss that? Well. We, you well, know, there's a lot of deception on their part. There's a lot of deception, but you know what? I, I, I sort of like people are often like bishops are always like people are always trying to trick me and saying like, oh, you didn't you didn't catch my deception and you didn't like catch me lying. I was lying to you this whole time about my sins. And, and they're like, well, how am I supposed to know? And we're over here like because you're the bishop because God's talking to you. So, you know, like that's the reason why. Well, it's not like, but like I guess spiritual lie detection isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't. It th- I don't think so. I thought it was. I think it's more like. I think that's what a lot of people thought. Is like a it's just supposed to be a receptacle for your confessions, not a lie detector. Are we as a church? Do you think are we moving away from mysticism as a general trend? Well, as a general trend from like 1830 to today, yes, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. But even more so, like even as time goes on, I th- does that not seem to be the general consensus? Well, I, I think I haven't polled a lot of people in our generation, but I feel like the proportion of people who have my attitude towards their patriarchal blessing Versus the generation before is even different. Yeah. I don't know if... I think it's a... With these... with When you get into mysticism, it has its its upsides and its downsides. But um, So you're losing some benefits, but also I think you're gaining some rationality that goes along with it. Mm-hmm. You're losing the magic of... Sometimes there's there's value in the unexplainable explained as as miraculous, but also um, when people make bad decisions based off of that mysticism because they thought it was real, that's a that's bad. That's a bad thing. 
Yeah. Someone charting their whole life based off what they believed was sort of a mystical truth. I think that's, and it ends up being bad. That's, that I was, that's a sad thing. That was, uh, makes me sad to think about that. We should just, we should rely on the facts. I think that's what God wants us to do. Yeah. A knowledge of things as they were, things as they are, things as they and will as be. And as they will be, and you'll be a doctor. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> I'm a patriarch. I don't know. I don't want to throw shade on patriarchs or anything, but most of the time I think it's good, sound, solid wisdom, you know? Only because I think they've evolved over time. Yeah. <laughs> they've learned the lessons. There's Lessons have been learned from them. Well, have we uh, beat that horse into yeah, the ground? We were, like, we were like, let's test the waters yeah. on that. And then I think we just, then we just said everything we wanted to say about it. <laughs> we just exhausted it. We didn't go into like the history or the doctrine of it too much because, you know, that would require research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah these are all. Off, off. You can do the research at home, listeners. Hey, we make the claims. You correct them later. All right. We're taking Email calls. Email in with everything we said wrong. We're taking calls. Line one. You're on there. Okay. Then what else should we talk about? Is that it? Or what do we have well, more? This is our Christmas special. Yeah, we haven't talked about anything Christmassy. You what have you, to share. Got, what are your big Christmas plans? I'm going to California. I'm going to go to Disneyland with my family. Is that a, that's a, is that a standard Christmas? That's you've done that before for <sighs> yeah, Christmas, right? For the last 5 years, I think we've done that. You say that so with such tiredness. Oh, I oh, to California to Disneyland. I'm again. embarrassed. I love it. I have such a good time. I love Disney, Disneyland. It's the land of high ideals, exemplified. It's like Disneyland took the high ideals. Walt Disney had a lot of high ideals. <laughs> he had a lot of ideas about the way things should be. <laughs> Well, you know, and the, Disneyland is where you can live that out. That's right. And I and I know you don't mean anything other than and just good things he he intended for the world to to be. Of course. He was <laughs> was let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the closet with uh with Disney. Disney's like, you know, the way I at one point was like the more, there's nothing wrong with the church the church, everything's fine with the church that's how i feel about disney like the disney's fine there's nothing wrong there's no skeletons in any closets anywhere it's fine so don't bring it up i won't anyway so i love disney disneyland disneyland is is where we're going and it's going to be a real fun time mickey mouse mickey pretzels isn't there like a new star wars ride or something there's a star wars land but didn't they like build a new ride? There's a Millennium Falcon ride. It's like a video you want. It's <laughs> you go into a room and watch a video. No, I, I don't know. I'll let you know what it's like. But uh, okay. I think you're in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. Beauty. Pretty cool. What about you? What are your Christmas plans? We are flying to Vegas. Whoa. And from Vegas, we're... Getting to St. George. You're going to hit those slots, some Christmas slots. You know, there is some talk about maybe we linger in Vegas just yeah. a little bit before we get to St. George. Yes. But, I mean, there's some talk. Some people are going to have to take the bus to St. George, and some people might rent a car. Mm. But we can't fit what, everyone what's, in What's in St. George? The Utah. <laughs> we All rented, her family's there, yeah, right? This is, uh, if we're really getting it, this is like what I call in-law Christmas where I guess it's like yeah. every, everyone gets together on the Anderson side of the family for Christmas. Yeah. Next year, hopefully Christmas 2020 is in Watuko. Watuko. For Nagless Christmas. Nag Christmas. So they, uh, they just rented a house in St. George. Wow. I guess it's, you know, it's still in Utah, so it's not too far for the, the Utah people. Yeah. And it's St. George. So it's, going to be not cold yeah i don't know if it's going to be really warm but it's saint george sure it will be so it's going to be not cold that's a guarantee it will not be cold it won't be blazing hot i assume but it'll be like us like a calgary summer i'm sure 
where it's like you can choose to wear pants or shorts outside. Yeah. Just like any Calgary summer where there's only two weeks of the year in Calgary where it's too hot to wear yeah, you pants. Can, you can decide. Yeah. That's probably what it'll be like. So, you know, it's, you know, they rented a big house so we can all stay at this big house in St. George for Christmas. Cool. And big you know, mansion. And yeah, and we got to fly in and out of Vegas. So hey. who knows what shenanigans you can get into at Sh- Vegas. Shenanigans. You're going to have some Christmas craps. I will roll those dice. I was thinking about gambling my student loans, a little Just double or nothing. Double or nothing, baby. Hey, I can't finish school, honey. Sorry. I gambled it in the casino. Yeah. We've been here for 10 minutes. Yeah, well, that's Vegas, baby. It's gone. Anyway, I have to stay here and work now. <laughs> but imagine if you just put your whole student loans on black and then you double it. And then you're like, okay, let's get to St. George now with a few extra G's. And what if you had zero dollars after that? Well, that's the reason why I don't do it. Right. That's the risk. That's the risk right there. Where I'm just like, imagine if you won. And I'm like, imagine if you lost. And that's why I don't gamble. Right. Yeah. Where I was like, if you won all the time, I would do it all the time. <laughs> Gambling's a life hack. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm probably not going to gamble. Yeah. But, okay. you know, there's things to do in Vegas. Uh, I think. There's uh, Celine I've been Dion, one time. Cirque du Soleil. There's uh, the Chris Backstreet Angel Boys. Mind Chris Freak. Angel Mind Freak. That's it. Yeah. Fr- Frank Sinatra impersonators, Elvis impersonators. You can get remarried at a drive thru. That could be fun. Yeah. Get remarried again. At that little chapel in Vegas. Yeah. Drive thru seems a little casual. You know what temple I like is the St. George Temple. It's a good one. It's a big. I like how hot it gets there. I just feel like that's what heaven will be like. It'll be like St. George, Utah. Yeah. Just like, because we're going to dwell in everlasting burnings, as we know. <laughs> and uh, that's the celestial kingdom. Did you know that? That, that? that is familiar. It also sounds a lot like the traditional version of hell. Right. So bad people are going to find. But like, if you're good, you'll it'll be. Uh, you'll love it. You'll love it. You'll be like, I love this temperature. I love this weather. <laughs> Have you spent a lot of time in St. George? I've driven through it uh, a handful of times, and it's uh, I like it. We'd always stop at Chuckarama. We'd be like, whoa, it's hot here. Then we move on. That's about it. What about you? I've driven through it once or twice. I drove to L.A. one time. Yeah. So I think that might be the only time I ever went through St. George. Yeah. Which was at night. Stopped for gas. Didn't see any of the sights because it was dark. I stopped overnight there. On I took a road trip to uh, California. Disneyland. To Disneyland. I was an adult, and I had driven for too long, and I had to stop at a hotel. Right. And it was so hot in the room. The sa- it was the same temperature outside as it was inside. No AC. None. Of, and I, so I had to, like, crank it on. Did you try praying to the ghosts of the hotel to turn the AC on? Please. (laughs) Please shift the weather or the airflow ghosts. Remember when we were supposed to take that road trip to uh, California. Venice Beach. Venice Beach. Yes! Why didn't we ever do that? Because we suck at following through on things. Uh, That was going to be a good time. We could still do it if your wife lets you. That's the great thing about being single. <laughs> oh, I'm so alone. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, yeah, I can I can go to Venice Beach whenever I want. Every night I cry myself to sleep, though, so that's the other side of it. Mm. Just kidding, folks. That's a joke. I'm joking. Intended to be funny. It's just uh, jokes are just slight amplifications. Of yeah. <laughs> amplifications. The amplifications. Of the truth, which is. So he doesn't cry himself to sleep. Yeah. He's just sad whenever he goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do think about, though? And this is true. Um, we were talking. <laughs> um, we were talking a little bit about your sleep. Since you've been married, because now you're sleeping with your wife. Mm-hmm. And um, anytime 
that uh, on any occasion I've had to share a bed with someone, I've always, I've never slept as well as I do by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, do you concur? Yes. Okay. So that's one one for the single side. Those bachelors, they sure do get their sleep. But also, if anything happens in the middle of the night, medical-wise, I'm dead. You're dead. You're I'm done. I'm done. And sometimes I think about that, and I scare myself for a bit, and then I have to, I have to distract myself. That's so, a lot of... I think the solution is you just get married, and you yeah. just get a king-size bed. Two blankets. Yeah. I think that is the secret. You get two different blankets. It's hard to it's hard to cuddle and have a little snuggles. With you two snuggle. Blankets. You snuggle in the beginning, and then you and then, then you, you separate. Go your separate ways. Because I have a tendency to go to bur- your separate room. Burrito myself. I have to be swaddled like a baby. <laughs> You're selfish with blankets. I'm just, and I don't do it while I'm awake. Yeah. That's the that's the key. I'll start off sleeping like a quote unquote normal person uh-huh. with the blankets just draped over you. But as soon as I start to drift off, my you you know, autonomic nervous system takes over and I just <laughs> swaddle myself. <laughs> you, steal, you steal the blankets from, uh, from your poor wife. I think I do like those crocodiles style death rolls that they do. <laughs> where I just like, <laughs> where, you know, a crocodile bites onto a little gazelle and then just starts violently twisting its body to like shred the yeah. antelope to pieces. Whereas I just like tuck a little piece of blanket under my arm or something, and then I violently twist <laughs> to just wrap myself up in blanket. So you don't bite the blanket and then twist. Well, you know, some you know, I, some part of me tucks it in. Grabs you clench it. it. Yeah, you know, then my elbow could be the little crocodile jaw, I'm just yeah. clamp, and then or your butt cheeks, and then you twist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those strong butt cheeks, those strong glutes, make their mark on the. On the sheets, and your wife yeah. is sad. So uh, hopefully, you guys get that blanket situation sorted out. I'm sure that you will. Mm-hmm. Maybe a, a maybe a blanket for Christmas is in order. Mm-hmm. Mm. Merry Christmas, wife. Here's a blanket, and that's all. Time will tell. Does she like Star Wars? I can't tell. Uh, like you can't tell from. Well, just our little Star Wars evenings. Right, she came in about halfway through. Yeah, uh, I think she enjoys spending f- time with spending time with the gang, with her hub hub and the gang, watching classic hero adventures unfold. But uh, you know, she's learning. There was a meme. She actually sent it to me. It was a Baby Yoda meme of like looking up where it's like me listening to my boyfriend explain Star Wars lore. <laughs> now that I have a reason to like Star Wars, thanks to Baby Yoda. Yeah. So, could she point out what a Jawa is now? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah. If I said... Put them in a lineup? If I just yell out Houtini, (laughs) she'll be like, that's that little Star Wars little fellas. They say that. Yeah. You know? Houtini. So, yeah. She's like... She loves Baby Yoda. Mm -hmm. Likes the Mandalorian. As we all do. It's given her a reason to learn a little more about Star Wars. But uh, what, what, what were, we were watching The Phantom Menace because I missed that one. Right. And she was looking at the battle with Qui-Gon, Darth Maul, and Obi-Wan. So good. And she's just like, she's so like anxious about it. She's just like, who dies, who survives? Wow. And I was like, well, Obi-Wan, you know, is in the other movies. So she's like, so does he live? <laughs> and I'm just like. No, he dies. I was like, no, baby, he's the guy that was in those other movies. And she's like, oh. I was like really trying to get her to come to the conclusion herself, but I'm just like, no, he's he's that old guy from the other movie with the white hair. Does he live or does he die? So he he lives to be in that movie. She's like, ah, uh, you know. And that's all you said. You didn't mention anything about Qui Gon, though. No, but then so then she eventually, you know, it's not that long of a scene. Yeah. Then she sees him die, but then she sees Darth Maul get cut in half, and I'm like, here's a fun fact for you. He's totally alive. <laughs> She's like, no way. I'm like, yeah, the fan. Somehow. I was like, the fans saved him. <laughs> they basically fan fictioned him back into existence. He really should have been in all three prequel movies. 
Yeah, Count Dooku didn't do it for me. Dooku sucked. And he wasn't even in like the... He was in like the last like 20 minutes of the second movie and the first 10 of the third. Uh, Imagine, yeah, Darth Maul kills Qui-Gon. And then like Obi-Wan gets the best of him. Yeah. But he still kind of just like ducks out. Yeah. And then he's back. Although I must say that that fight is one of my favorite sword fights of all time. It is. Yeah, that's once it started, like the doors open and the music comes in. I was like, just like, I was like, this is what redeems the whole movie. And I was like, and this is the best Star Wars song ever. Yeah. Duel of the Fates. I used to bump yeah. that in my car. I mean, I'd be like, give me something I can drive to Brayden when we were like <laughs> young and I'm driving him to school. Give me something I can drive to. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, Across the Stars. That's your favorite. That's the best one. It's not the best one. You're just like looking away as I... Yeah, just, I have to finish... Like, finish the melody. You have to. Resolve the melody, but we all know Duel of the Fates. So good. That's like, oh, yeah. Spoilers. Have you heard any spoilers for the latest movie that we're going to go see? No, and shut your mouth. Every time I see anything where it's like, here's a new clip, I'm like, no. 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 (laughs) No. No. (laughs) Unlimited power. What did you say? I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. Look at us. We've come full circle and we're back to Star Wars. <laughs> it's got to be another hour. And then, oh, by. check the computer. The stopped recording 45 minutes ago. <laughs> we're an hour 47. You really should have time stamped that one section. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to have to time stamp Shoot. this section. Shoot. Oh, well. This episode will have the most uh, post editing. <laughs> You got it. Is there anything you want to take out of it? (laughs) We might have to delete that whole thing about patriarchal blessings. (laughs) (laughs) We might. Just kidding. I think we we handled it in our usual way. We handle things. Uh, If you're familiar with us and how we handle things, you will not be surprised about anything we said. I think. Uh, Unless this is your first episode and then this breaks your heart and I'm sorry. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Let's shut this down, Lyndon. What uh, What else? What, give us a Christmas message. Give us a 30-minute Christmas message. <laughs> Go. You're one thing I've been surprised about, I feel, this year. No war on Christmas. Oh, you're right. And I feel like no war on Christmas is, in a way, a war on Christmas. Oh. Because <laughs> okay. now it... <laughs> It lulls us into a false sense of security where we're like, everyone is like happy and okay with Christmas. You know, baby Jesus. Yeah. And everyone's just fine with Christmas being Christmas. Yeah. And now what do we have to fight for? Um, a season worth fighting for. A season worth fighting for Mulan. Mm-hmm. No? Okay, I don't know. So I, I ruined your ending. I'm not sure how I want to... <laughs> You know, I didn't no, want to. I, I didn't want War wanna... on Christmas. No war on Christmas. Give I don't it. know how to feel about it. <laughs> Give us a heartwarming thing to go out on, not the war on Christmas. <laughs> heartwarming. <laughs> heartwarming. Heartwarning. Check your triglycerides, everyone. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Life submission. <laughs>